Hi friends, welcome back. For those that are new, my name is Julie and I have a fun Halloween craft for you today. It is inspired by the bag of plastic bones that I picked up from Dollar Tree. And today we are making this, I don't know, what are we gonna call it? A little bone cluster with some little handmade specimen tags. And I designed this to go along with the specimen bottles that I created and posted a video on last week. So they're very reminiscent. Um, they do go with the bottles and these will be part of my tiered tray decor. I know I am very behind. In fact, this tutorial will probably post just a few days before Halloween, but that's just kind of how I'm rolling this year. I wanted to make sure that I did post it before Halloween, and I will post the link to the tutorial for the specimen bottles in the description below, and I'll also post a link to that uh, Dollar Tree haul. But the main stars of this tutorial are these plastic bones. And then we will also be making the specimen tags with the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous Field Notes stamp set. It is truly one of my favorites. It is such a great go-to for these types of projects. So I'm gonna clear off this stuff and uh, pull together the rest of the supplies and we'll go over those. Okay, so here are the rest of the supplies. Very simple and easy things that you may have on hand. And if you don't have these specific supplies on hand, this is, I think, a really easy one to swap in things that you do have in your stash. So I went ahead and pulled out two more of the bones. We will be aging these with some alcohol inks. These are some of my DIY alcohol inks. In fact, I will put a post to that video below on how we made these together. We will also be using some combination of distress inks. I've pulled out a walnut stain here, black soot. I may uh, also grab my vintage photo, some black permanent type ink. Anything that you have in black will work. Daubers. I have some trim here that we will be using to tie our bones together. Um, some vintage pieces of paper, a bit of string, and then these were the cotton fibers and cheesecloths that we had dyed when we made the specimen bottles. So I have a few scraps of those left over. And let me clear this off and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is work on aging our bones. So you can see this is what they start out off looking like. I mean, they do look kind of cool. They are sort of a gray tone plastic, but I think we want to make them look a bit more aged and decrepit and kind of old. Maybe just give them a really cool grungy look. So the first thing I want to do is grab some of my alcohol inks and we're gonna give them, them a little bit of a spray. I kind of have a little bit of clog. There we go. And I'm just using this paper plate. I will grab a pair of tweezers and just kind of turn them over, give them another spray on the other side. Now this is that um, brown that I shared the recipe for. I'm just gonna take my tweezers and sort of dip dip the end in here and get it sort of covered. I think that's pretty good. Let's get a little bit more on that end. I'm trying not to touch it with my fingers. I'm gonna move it around in there, whoops. That's why I have those Scrap pieces of dictionary pages put down. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good. I am actually going to grab an index card and sort of mop up some of that ink just so we don't waste it. That is the one thing about those spray nozzles is a lot of ink tends to come out, but we will put it to use. 
All right, and then I'm gonna put that off to the side. And let me grab my heat gun and we'll give that a little bit of heat. Okay, we're looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna hit that in a couple spots again. I think some of the ends there needed a little bit more brown. Let's turn this one over here. Let's get that one a little bit of a hit there. I think we're pretty good. And I will grab my index card. Okay, we are looking pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. We're kind of splotchy. Um, we do have some areas here where we can see the original plastic underneath, but what I want to do now is grab my Distress Ink in Walnut Stain. And we're going to go over some of the spots that are still that lighter plastic. just so they're not so bright, kind of knock those down a little bit. And then we're going to come in with our black soot distress ink and finish off this aging process. Okay, so hopefully you can see that we're a little bit less kind of bright gray. Okay, so we're pretty good. Let's grab our black kind of do the same thing. You can stipple it brush it on. Let's get those ends a little bit. If you're worried about your fingers getting messy, you can definitely wear gloves. It's definitely one of those that you can get quite inky and quite messy, but I usually tend to just kind of go for it. Okay, and then the little trick that I came up with to get down in these darker crevices is to use a Q-tip. Hopefully you can see that. And then you can really get in, down in there where it sort of makes sense that it would be a lot darker down in there. really cool and let's do that one let's see if we can get down in that groove hopefully that kind of comes through and that one you can really see it Our bones are looking pretty good. Let's grab this other one. In fact, this one I'm going to hit a little bit. Maybe hit a little bit more. In fact, let's take a little bit of that walnut. This one maybe isn't quite as aged. They 
almost look the same there when I had the lids off. Okay, we'll hit that one a little bit more. I think those are looking pretty good. Okay, bones are done. I'm going to set them aside here. And then the other thing that I want to age really quick is some of this cotton kind of twill trim. Let me cut off a piece of that. Let's do about like that. And then we're gonna age this up too. So we're gonna grab our alcohol ink, again in that brown. And I think this one I am going to hit with the black, which of course comes out with sort of a purple, purple tone. Let's hit that a little bit. Let's grab our tweezers and move this around. So we can get all the pieces and parts covered, get rid of that white. And just like the bones, we can come back in and hit it with the oxide inks as well, but we'll get as much of that white covered as we can with the alcohol ink. I always feel like when I'm doing this, it's very awkward. <laughs> I always feel like there's probably a better way of doing it. If you have a better technique, definitely leave me a comment below. I don't feel awkward when I'm doing it. Um, when I'm just sitting here playing and crafting, I always feel awkward when, when I'm filming it. Like, this must look like a strange way of doing this. Okay, I think we're pretty good. I'm actually going to finish up a little bit here with some of the ink dauber. There we go. I think we're pretty good. Okay, I like that. Okay, I'm going to wipe my fingers off and I will be back. Okay, not perfectly clean, but a little bit better. So we, we are going to let that trim dry while we move on to making our labels. So let me grab the two stamps that I want. So we are going to use this one that says collect, and then we're this cool one. I like this one. It looks like a little grid that says number 80611. I think that's a really cool one. And then these are the papers that I pulled off to stamp on. This little tiny one, we are going to stamp it on a piece of this coffee dyed index card. And then we'll be sandwiching some different papers together to make the collect one. So let's work on this one first. And again, I'm just using this archival ink in jet black. And I will put the supply list down too in the description. I think that's often handy. If you're looking for a specific supply that you don't already have. Okay, there's that one. I'm gonna clean off my stamp pad. And then let's do collect. Actually, what I'm gonna do first is we are going to glue on this piece of vintage book page. So I always like to keep the edges and the bottoms and any of the blank pages or pieces that I come across when I am sourcing the printed parts of the vintage book pages. I love to keep these cut off pieces. So I'm gonna grab a glue stick here and let's put this book page on this side I 
I'm just going to do a little sandwich and then let's actually fold it over on this other side as well. And we'll just fold it over like that. We don't need that entire piece, but that way both the front and the back is covered. And we will just burnish that a little, get that a little bit of dry time. And I will show you too here the close-up. So here is a close-up of that collect tag, and then you could see the back is actually covered. And I've done the same thing. I've just sandwiched a piece of brown craft paper in between the two. We are trying to mimic, as best we can, an actual aged label. Okay, so let's get our ink, our collect stamp here. Hopefully that's a good impression. Nice, I think that looks good. Clean that off, let's get rid of that. And I'm going to grab my little fussy cut cutter bees. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a fussy cut around the label. And I'm actually going to leave a little bit of white there at the edge. Just a little bit of white border. So I'm not going right up to the edge of the stamp. There we go. And we will do the same with this one. We'll just do a little bit of a fussy cut and I will leave a little bit of a border. Just also because this stamp doesn't have a designated border around the text on this end. So we will just give it a border. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here because we will be punching a hole in that. Let me just straighten this up a little bit. It's a little bit wonky. We're pretty good here. Okay, let's get these things out of the way. All right, so now let's age up our labels. So I'm going to come back and grab some of those same colored distress inks that we used for the bones and the trim so i'm going to hit the edges with the black come back on the back a little bit let's grab our brown And then my little trick, what I love to do is actually come in and scrunch up, scrunch the paper up, scrunch it up, make it look, gives it a really old aged look, like it's been around for a very long time. And then the other fun thing to do is you can come back in and ink up those fold lines. Gives it a really, Really, really cool look. And you can even, you know, rip the edges. Let's rip that little corner there. Kind of makes sense. These labels have been tied around those bones for a long time. So that looks really good. And then let's do the same. with this other one. Those inks look so much the same, so I'm going to just do them one at a time here. So we're gonna age up that back, make that look old, and then come in here with our walnut.
Ooh, that looks really good. Age up the back. And then what I want to do with this one, hopefully you can see, I want to distress the edges of the tag. So I'm gonna grab my just my little cutter B scissors. And this is still a little bit damp from the glue stick. It still hasn't really dried thoroughly. Normally I would let this dry a little bit more but it does aid us in doing the distressing. And I'm just roughing up the edges. Do it on this side a little bit. That looks really cool. A little frayed, a little distressed. And then we could do the same thing with this one. Let's. I didn't do it with the prototype, but let's come in and scrunch that up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to grab Vintage Photo. It's a little bit lighter than the Walnut. Let me find my... dauber end here, and I'm going to hit those folds a little bit. It's a little bit lighter of an ink than the walnut, and we'll hit up those edges again. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I think we are good. Okay. Okay, now let's work on tying these two together. So I'm gonna grab this little teeny tiny hole punch. Does it even say? It doesn't, it doesn't say the size, but I would say use what you have. And I'm just going to punch a hole in each of the tags. That one's a little bit stuck there. There we go. Okay, so we have our little holes here. And this one is substantial because it has that piece of craft paper in between. Um, this is something you can skip, you don't need to do it. But what I did in this little thin label here is I actually cut a little piece of, um, tiny little piece of index paper and I basically made a hole protector. I don't even know if that's gonna show up. Hopefully you can zoom in if you're watching on your phone, but I just cut two little squares and glued them on each side. So I think I'm, I will take the time to do that. That's just a little, a little extra something to do. Um, just in case I end up gifting or selling this little bundle, I would like it to stand up well. Okay, so we just have two little, and actually I probably should have done that before I punched the hole, but and I'm just gonna use a little drop of art glitter glue. I had forgotten about this little step that I did, but I think it's good to take that time. Okay, and then we are going to age that up a little bit. And it looks kind of cool that it's there, but it's not, it's not super visible. Now hopefully you can see that. And then let's punch a hole again in that. Because I sell 
a lot of handmade items too. I'm always thinking about um, where my pieces may end up. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's tie our labels together. And I'm just gonna grab, this is just a little um, piece of twine. I'm not even sure where I got this. Just cut off a little piece here. And I did play around with using a jump ring. I wanted to see about adding a little bit of metal um, to the look. And I just didn't, I didn't have the right jump rings, but I think that would be awfully cool as well to, to use a little bit of metal in the project. Okay, so I just did a little loop at the top. So there is our little label bundle. And now let's look at putting our bones together. So this one, I stacked the two larger at the bottom. Maybe let's do that. And then the smaller one here at the top. I think that looks pretty good. All right, and okay, and here's our twine. It's a little bit damp still, but I think that's okay. At home, you could hit it with your heat gun or just give it a little bit more dry time. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And like really pull on that so these are nice and secure. I don't want those going anywhere. Okay, so we have our single knot, and then I'm gonna grab some of this dyed cheesecloth. I'm gonna lay a few of these pieces down. So I think that has a cool look, and then I'm actually gonna grab a piece of this cotton fiber that we also dyed when we were making our bottles. And then let's see. And then I am going to loop this trim if I can. Through that piece of twine. Let's see here. I think I need to lay lay my stuff back down. Let's get those fibers down there. Okay, now we are going to come in and tie a knot again. And then we'll come in and zhuzh it. We'll zhuzh it a little bit. I think that's pretty good. That's pretty pretty tight. I'm really going to tighten that down well. Okay. Okay, I think we are good. Okay, now let's do a little bit of zhuzhing. We don't want the ends so long. So I'm going to grab my fabric scissors here, and I'm just going to cut, cut this a little bit shorter. We won't get rid of that because it's really cool. We will use that for something else. I'll come in and play around with the ends there. Make them look a little bit more aged and distressed. I think that looks cool. And then let's look here and see if we need to trim some of these other fibers here, just so they're not so super crazy. Just give it a little bit of a haircut. Oh, so cute. All right, I think that looks good. 
And maybe I'm gonna come in and cut off a little bit of that in there. So cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. So here's the one we made together today. They will all end up looking very unique and very different. And of course, um, the different fibers and trims and things that you have on hand and even the maybe the different stamps that you use for your labels. You can really change them up. So here's the prototype. And then here's the one we made today. And I think these are so cute. And they really match well with the specimen bottles that we made together in the last video. And I think these are going to look really cute on my tiered tray. So stay tuned. That will be the next video coming up. I will be going with a very uh, grungy specimen kind of found object naturalist type thing. I don't know. Is that a vibe? That's the vibe. I, that's the vibe I'm going for. So I'm excited to start pulling things and putting that together. I thank you so much for hanging out with me today and crafting with me. I hope it makes you inspired to have fun with your Halloween decor as well. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.